This is Bigger Pockets Daily, kicking off your Monday with a daily dose of real estate information and education. The article I'm about to share is one of more than 10,000 blog articles available on Bigger Pockets, but you can't read the blog when you're walking the dog or browsing the MLS. How much cash flow should rentals make? By Brandon Turner. All right, so a buddy of mine texted me and said, Hey, Brandon, I've got this real estate deal I want to buy, and it should produce between $100 and $200 per month in cash flow. Is that a good deal? What do you think? Basically, $100 to $200 per month is something people oftentimes hear me say. How much cash flow is good for a rental property? I host a webinar every week on Bigger Pockets. It's available for free at biggerpockets.com slash webinars, where I talk about this idea. I generally aim for $100 to $200 in cash flow per unit that I buy. So for a duplex, I want to make $200 minimum. If it's a fourplex, I want $400 minimum, and that's cash flow left over in my pocket after all of the bills have been paid. After everything is said and done, I want at least a minimum of $100 per month per unit on a single family house. I usually aim for about $200 on a multifamily. Again, after all of the bills have been paid. Now, I say that, but then there's a caveat there, because it really depends on how big the deal is, right? I mean, I think about it this way. If you were to invest a million dollars into any kind of investment and you're making $100 a month, is that a good deal? It doesn't sound like a very good deal, but if you were to invest $500 into an investment and every single month you made $100, that's the best investment in the world, right? And so, the idea of cash flow per unit or cash flow per door is a great metric, but it's only one metric that you can really go by. There's another metric that we care a lot about as well, cash on cash return. Cash on cash returns is what percentage of my investment that I would make back this year in cash flow. To do some basic math, if you invested $1,000 into an investment and you made back $100 in the whole year, that is a 10% return. Cash on cash return is how much money you made in profit in cash flow during the year divided by how much money you put into the deal. So, going back to my buddy who asked me if $100 or $200 may be a good deal for the single-family house he wants to buy, well, the question I asked him was, how much money did you put into it? His answer was $74,000. What is considered a good cash-on-cash return? Okay, here's some basic math. If you were making $200 per month every single month, then that's $2,400 a year. That amount divided by 74,000 is 3.2%. Is 3.2% cash on cash return a good deal? For me, no, that's not a good deal. My minimum that I generally aim for is between 10 and 12%. I really want to see 12%. Now, why did I pick that number? Well, on average, the stock market has returned between 6 and 7% over the past 100 years. But I wanted to get a lot better than that, so 12% became a really good rule of thumb for me. I can't just rely on 12%, though, because you've got to also look at the total amount of cash flow you're getting. Here's why. If you invested a dollar into a real estate deal and you made two bucks a year, is two dollars a year in profit worth all the headache of putting into a real estate deal? Probably not, because you're only getting two dollars a year. But that's a 200% cash on cash return, so shouldn't you do it? Well, no, because it's only two bucks. I don't care about that. That's why I look at both those numbers. I want a cash-on-cash return of a minimum 12%. I would go slightly lower than that if I believe the market is going really well, appreciation-wise, like if property value is going to climb. In fact, I actually just bought a property here on the island of Maui in Hawaii, and I'm going to get just under a 10% return. Why would I do that? Why would I violate my rules? Because it's Maui and I believe that prices on an island are going to go up really well. So, I will budge a little bit. What is a good overall return? So, I want both those things. I want a minimum of $100 per unit per month, personally, and I want minimum 12% cash-on-cash return. That's my general line of thought. Then, there's one more metric that I look at, overall return. There's a couple ways to look at it. Some people look at IRR, which is called internal rate of return. I kind of look at just an average rate of return. 
There's, again, a few different formulas for figuring it out, but it kind of tells you the same thing. The idea is, if you hold this property for, let's say, 5 or 10 years, and property values go up a little bit, the loan gets paid down a little bit. Over that time frame, what's my average return each year? And so for that, I typically shoot for around 15% when I go into an investment. In fact, I'm doing a big syndication deal right now where I'm raising money for a big real estate deal. It's a big mobile home park conglomerate that I'm buying, and that's always the metric that we were aiming to beat. I want to be able to give investors at least 15%, because if you can get 15% by doing your own deal, or 15 or more by investing in somebody else's, why would you do your own deals? That was the logic behind picking that 15% number in our syndication fund. So, that's kind of the idea of how I look at a deal and whether I'm going to do it or not. There's the $100 per month per unit minimum, 12% cash on cash return, and then a 15% average return per year. And again, if you want to look at IRR or some more complicated metrics like that, you can. Congratulations! You just got smarter and one step closer to reaching your real estate investing goals. You know what else will make you smarter? Setting up keyword alerts in your Bigger Pockets profile. Go to Account Settings, Alerts, and set up alerts for the market or strategy you're interested in. For example, Turnkey or Kansas City. You're guaranteed to connect with like minded investors who share similar goals. Want to hear more Bigger Pockets daily? Check out some older episodes you missed. Otherwise, We'll see you tomorrow.